15 years ago, my ex-husband cheated on me with his childhood friend and even had a child with her, leading to our divorce. After the divorce, I suffered harassment from his affair partner and was eventually forced to quit my job. When I was at my lowest, my current husband rescued me, and we've built a happy family and live a peaceful life. But the happiness was short-lived. I unexpectedly ran into my ex-husband who abandoned me 15 years ago. You're still single, aren't you? No one would marry a woman who can't have kids. You still can't say anything but nasty comments, can you? Unlike someone, my son is adorable like his mother. Looking down on me with a smug smile, I retorted, oh, really? He's very cute indeed. Oh, I should introduce my kids to you too. As I introduced my son, my ex-husband's smile faded. And he began to tremble. My name is Emily Johnson. I'm 38 years old this year. I live with my 13-year-old son Kyle, my 11-year-old daughter Lily, and my husband of the same age, Mike. Kyle, a middle school freshman, is right in the middle of his rebellious phase. He's been quite mouthy lately, but when he really doesn't listen, Mike steps in and sets him straight. Lily, my daughter, loves makeup and clothes and is quite the fashionista. Being the youngest, she's very good at getting her way. My son Kyle, who adores his sister Lily, quickly panics and apologizes whenever she tells him, if you're not nice to mom, I'll start disliking you. He hurriedly says, sorry, sorry. Look, I'll get along with mom, okay? He's honest and always livens up the atmosphere. Though noisy, we live happily. But actually, I'm a divorcee and this is my second marriage. I divorced due to my ex-husband's despicable betrayal. It was 15 years ago when I was in a senior-junior relationship with my ex-husband, John, in college. We were blessed and had a smooth sailing relationship as we had many mutual friends. Soon after getting married, we both wanted children and would talk about how nice it would be to have them, even dreaming about dressing them up in matching outfits. However, reality wasn't so kind, and a year passed without us having a child. Each month, when my period came, it strained our relationship, which neither of us liked, so we had many discussions and even underwent expensive fertility treatments. But when told there was nothing wrong, our marital relationship didn't improve. Initially, John was supportive and cooperative, but as time passed without a child, his attitude towards me began to change. He'd throw sarcastic comments like, ah, when will I ever become a father? As if it was all my fault we didn't have kids. He stopped helping with household chores altogether, leaving me to do all the cooking, washing dishes, laundry, and cleaning. When I asked, why have you suddenly stopped helping with the chores? You used to help, he said, since you're infertile, if you don't at least do the housework, you're not fulfilling your role as a woman. What's the point of our marriage then? His words became increasingly thorny over time. My sister and her husband are already expecting their second child. Isn't that great? They're on their second, and we don't even have our first. Right? He would glare at me with harsh eyes, mocking and despising me. If you had a normal body, I would have been a father long ago. How can you say I'm not normal when we don't even know the cause yet? But John retorted, infertility is always the woman's fault. Don't you even know that? If I had known you were infertile, I would never have married you. Show some remorse. His words pierced my heart. I also started receiving calls from my in-laws saying, we want to see our grandchild soon. At first, I brushed it off, saying, it's only been a year. These things take time, but maybe that was a mistake because my mother-in-law's attitude became harsher. She'd say, you're useless if you can't have children. My daughter had one right away. You're the only defective one. I felt pressured every day. One day, my close friend Sarah invited me out for drinks. John had been saying he was busy with work and coming home late, so I thought a break would be good and accepted the invitation. Then Sarah revealed a shocking truth. I've wanted to see you for a long time, Emily. There's something I need to tell you. I've missed you too. So, what did you want to talk about? Emily, do you remember Jessica? Jessica was John's childhood friend. They lived near each other as kids and their parents were close. Jessica and I went to the same university, and now she works at my company. She's the president's daughter and got her job through connections. 
Jessica and I weren't particularly close in college, as we were in different clubs and departments, and we barely interacted at work. John once introduced me to her, saying, she's my girlfriend, so be nice to her. But she glared at me, perhaps not wanting to lose her childhood friend, so I thought she disliked me and kept my distance. Tall and beautiful, she was popular enough to be in beauty pageants in college and was somewhat of a celebrity in the company, being the president's beautiful daughter. Jessica? Oh, John's childhood friend? Yeah, I know her. She's beautiful. We're at the same company, but we don't interact much. What about her? Well, it's hard to say, but I think Emily, your husband John, and Jessica are having an affair. What? I was shocked by Sarah's warning, feeling like I'd been struck by lightning. I saw them the other day. They were walking hand in hand, not like just friends. That can't be. You should check it out. And call me if anything happens, okay? Thanks for telling me. I had a feeling that. John was cheating. His attitude towards me was terrible, and he always came home late, claiming to be working overtime. On weekends, he'd say he was entertaining clients and wouldn't be home. I had a vague idea. But I pretended not to notice. That day, after parting ways with Sarah, I headed straight to a private investigator. The reason, of course, was to gather evidence of my husband's infidelity. It didn't take more than a week to gather evidence, but I myself wasn't ready to decide on divorce right away. No matter how terrible a husband he was, he was the person I once vowed to spend my life with. I couldn't decide right away. A few days later, I returned home to find John, who usually came home late, sitting at the dining table. Oh, you're home. Yeah. I thought you'd be late today, as usual. I tried to sound sarcastic on purpose. Yeah, sorry about that. I need to talk to you. Having heard about the affair from Sarah, I had a bad feeling. I want a divorce. What? So, that's how it is. I realized that John wasn't just fooling around with Jessica, but that he was serious. Jessica's pregnant. So, I'm gonna marry her. Jessica. Your childhood friend? You said she was just a friend. And now she's pregnant? You were having an affair? Don't call it an affair. Makes me sound like a scumbag. Can't be helped, right? Jessica can actually get pregnant, and she's beautiful. There's no reason for me to choose you over her. I was shocked by John's brazen attitude. He didn't think he was in the wrong at all. I was so shocked that I couldn't find the words to speak. Seeing me silent, John scoffed and said, Even my mom kept nagging me to divorce you. She always liked Jessica more. She's beautiful, kind, and can have kids. My mom will be happy with this. In the end, my mother-in-law and husband had always preferred Jessica. I was so sad that tears started to flow. Well, I've packed my things and I need to leave for the sake of the child that's about to be born. Saying that, John left the house. I didn't have the energy to stop him. Later, I was unilaterally sent divorce papers. There was a note attached, written by a woman. Please divorce my husband quickly. The contradictory words made question marks pop up over my head. I wanted to retort, you're the one who stole my husband. Seeing those words, I finally came to my senses. Why am I the one being blamed? I couldn't just silently go through with the divorce. With that thought, I took the evidence I had gathered from the private investigator and filed for divorce mediation. A few days after filing, I received a call from an unknown number. Wondering who it could be, I answered the phone to hear a woman's voice screaming, What do you think you're doing? Why are you suing us? It was Jessica, the affair partner. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I know all about your infidelity. It's only natural for me to ask for alimony. Alimony? I have a baby in my belly. You're really gonna demand money at a time when we'll need it most? Who's the real monster here? You sleep with a married man and have the nerve to say that to me. It's your fault for being infertile, you terrible woman. Her high-pitched screaming hurt my ears. Anyway, I intend to settle this divorce, including alimony, in court. 
let's discuss this further in the proper setting. With that, I hung up the phone. Later, thanks to the evidence I had, the mediation recognized John and Jessica's relationship as adultery. John, unhappy with this, tried to blame my infertility, but it was dismissed as unreasonable since no test results had confirmed me as the cause within just a year of marriage. I received $40,000 in alimony from John and $20,000 from Jessica, both paid in one lump sum. I didn't want a prolonged, messy payment schedule and a lingering connection to them. This is how our divorce was finalized. However, my suffering didn't end there. Since John, Jessica, and I all attended the same university, the affair scandal became a topic of gossip among many friends. According to a close friend, the rumor was that I had hidden my infertility and tricked John into marriage. Some people even sympathized with John and Jessica. How awful! Jessica and I worked at the same company, and she spread unfounded rumors there too. Everyone sided with Jessica, who's a beauty and the boss's daughter. She tearfully played the victim, saying, Emily is such a terrible person. Taking money from us for alimony when we're about to have a child, even though she hid her infertility. At first, I tried to ignore it, but being the boss's daughter, Jessica got preferential treatment. My boss would scold me, don't be mean to Jessica, and despite my hard work, I was progressively left out of major projects. Eventually, I was mentally cornered and chose to resign. While I was looking for a new job, I received a headhunting offer from another company. They said, we need someone as diligent and talented as you. At my new job, I was amazed at how freely I could work. My new boss paid close attention to each employee. There was none of that favoritism or nepotism like at my previous company. I found myself drawn to this wonderful boss. That's how I met my current husband, Mike. When I was at my lowest after a terrible split from my ex-husband, he kindly supported me. After several dinners together, we started talking not just about work, but about our personal lives too, and our relationship developed. Things went well between us, and thankfully, Mike proposed to me. However, having been rejected by my ex-husband for infertility, I had many fears about marriage and confessed to Mike that I might be infertile. Then, looking at me earnestly, Mike said, of course, I'd be happy if we could have a child together in the future. But the most important thing is that I love you, Emily. You're important to me. So even if we can't have children, I will always be by your side. He hugged me gently. I was so happy. I thought I wanted to spend my life with this man and decided to marry Mike. Soon after our marriage, we had our first child, Kyle. Followed by our daughter, Lily. Perhaps not getting pregnant with my ex-husband was a matter of timing or compatibility. Raising children is hard, but we're living happily. Then one day, I attended a friend's wedding. During the middle of the ceremony, when it was time for greetings and mingling, I stepped out to go to the bathroom and saw my ex-husband John, whom I hadn't seen in 15 years. Ugh! Why is he here? I panicked for a moment, my mind going blank. But then I remembered that today's bride and groom were friends from college. It made sense for John to be there. I tried to ignore him and walk past, but he called out loudly, hey. So he noticed me. What? You've put on weight, haven't you? It's been so long since I've seen you. John, seemingly drunk, talked loudly and spat while speaking. You haven't changed a bit. I added in my mind, still as unpleasant as ever. Then John called his family over. There was Jessica and their son. Seeing my face, Jessica smirked and said, Oh, it's been a while. Have you gained weight? Is it stress eating? Must be tough. I bet you're still an infertile woman with no one to take you, right? I was dumbfounded by their rude behavior and couldn't find the words to respond. I noticed their son hanging his head, blushing with embarrassment. He had very handsome features. Ah! I forgot to introduce him. This is my son. As you can see, he's cute like Jessica, right? Jessica, too, proudly bragged about their son. He's handsome, smart, a real genius. Sorry to say, it seems like we're the only happy ones here. They praised their son and looked down at me with smug smiles. However, their son seemed unhappy with his parents' behavior. 
seemingly displeased with them belittling someone else. He must be a very kind boy, I thought. But I had no time to deal with them. As I turned to leave, John grabbed my arm tightly, stopping me. So, you cause our divorce because of your infertility, and then you have the nerve to extort money from us? John was still holding a grudge about something that happened 15 years ago. If anyone should hold a grudge, it's me. Then Jessica also turned to me and said. Yeah. You're a single, infertile woman, why would you need money? Families with children like us need it more, don't you think? Pay us back double the amount you took from us at that time. I was dumbstruck by such selfish remarks, speechless, when John and Jessica's son spoke up. Single means unmarried, right? But she's wearing a wedding ring on her left hand. Pointed out by their son, John and Jessica stared intently at the ring on my left ring finger. What? You're married? John and Jessica's loud exclamations drew stares from the surrounding people. I was mortified. As I pondered what to do, I caught sight of a familiar face. You shouldn't be so loud at a celebration like this. It's disturbing others. Maybe you should be more considerate? Mom, who are these scary-looking people? Kyle. Lily. Yes, worried about my late return, Kyle and Lily had come to check on me. Lily, as usual, was outspoken, but it was rare for Kyle to speak so provocatively. Mom, you're late coming back. Eh? Mom? You have kids? Yes, I do. Let me introduce them. This is my son, Kyle, and my daughter, Lily. John seemed speechless, shocked that his ex-wife, whom he thought was infertile, had two children. Jessica was staring intently at my son. After a while, she muttered. In a strained voice. That uniform! She seemed fixated on my son's attire. Ah, uh, he came straight from school with his dad. It's not about that. That's the uniform of that famous private middle school. Huh? Oh, yes. Kyle's attending that prestigious private middle school. Yes. Kyle excelled in his studies and was attending a well-known local private school. It can't be. A child of yours, at that school. And my daughter, too. She plans to take the exam for the same school next year. That's right. And you know what? Kyle is amazing. He won a violin competition. Violin. I thought I recognized this boy. Wasn't he on TV recently? Ah. Uh, you saw that? Yes, he's been getting a lot of media attention lately. Today, he's coming back from violin practice. Impossible. That can't be. John and Jessica were left gaping, frozen in shock. You were supposed to be infertile. How could you have such? I calmly addressed John's confusion. I'm glad to see you two seem happy. As you can see, I'm filled with happiness too. Let's not involve each other anymore. We have nothing to do with each other now. As I was about to leave with my children, my husband, Mike, appeared. Hey. What's going on here? The main event is about to start again. Seeing my husband, John's face turned pale. President Smith! What? Jessica too, upon seeing my husband, turned white and trembled. Your husband is Smith, the young CEO of ABC Corporation who got the job last year, right? Actually, my husband Mike works as the CEO of the parent company of Jessica's father's company. He was job hunting when the parent company approached him for a position, and that's how he switched jobs. I met Mike there, a man who was already popular and skilled. Last year, he was recommended by the then CEO and took over the role. Yeah, it's Smith, but… Huh? What's with this atmosphere? What happened? Sensing the uneasy air, my husband Mike looked puzzled, and that's when Kyle spoke up. These people were saying mean things about our mom, calling her infertile and fat, so Lily and I came to help her. They heard it. Kyle and Lily had overheard my ex-husband and his wife making rude comments about me. That's why Kyle had spoken up like that. You guys are, those. The word infertile seemed to click something in Mike's mind, and his expression turned grim. I had heard rumors, but never imagined they were this insensitive. Then, John suddenly started to defend himself to Mike. No, I mean. 
Mr. Smith, I would never say anything bad about your wife, right, Jessica? Why are you groveling so much? She's just his wife, right? I was the one who got yelled at by my father and suffered a lot because you made me pay her money for our affair. I'll never forgive you now. Jessica. What are you saying? If he dislikes us, our subcontracting company is finished. Think about that. Realizing it was bad to be disliked by the CEO of their parent company, John started to flatter Mike, but Jessica, not satisfied, started arguing with him. What a ridiculous scene. Then, John and Jessica's son, who had been silent, burst out. Stop it! Listening to you both is terrible! You're saying awful things about her, calling her fat and infertile, and now demanding money back. I'm ashamed! And what about this affair? Am I a child born out of an affair? Am I unwanted? His voice cracked with tears. John and Jessica started to fumble for words. Well, that's not. Uh. As I realized the guests were staring at us. Jessica, noticing their gazes, blushed and looked down. Although I still can't forgive John and Jessica, their son seems to be a just and kind boy. He's innocent in all this. Thinking this, I was about to comfort their son. When my husband Mike spoke first. Thank you. You stood up for my wife. You really are a kind boy. He said, gently patting the boy's head. I followed with a smile. But maybe I am a bit overweight. That's not true. Well, actually, I'm pregnant. My belly's getting bigger. I said, stroking my belly. I'm currently pregnant with our third child. And on maternity leave. Seeing the boy with tears in his eyes, I added. Your mom took great care of you in her belly, just like this. You're not unwanted. Your parents love you and are proud of you, right? I looked at John and Jessica. The boy then asked them, really? In a hurry, they both nodded vigorously and said, yeah, yeah. You're our pride and joy. Absolutely. You mean everything to us. At this, the boy immediately broke into a wide smile. Seeing their son smile, I also felt a sense of relief. Let's just remember that today is a day for celebration. Let's all head back to our seats. Saying this, each family returned to their respective seats. And so, the turbulent scene came to a close. As the wedding ended and we were heading to the station, Jessica and John came up, holding hands with their son. Kyle and Lily had been intimidating the two who had insulted me, but Mike calmed them down with a wry smile. Um, we're sorry. We're really sorry. It's too late, but for everything before and for today. We're truly sorry. And thanks for earlier, for our son. It was the first apology I had heard from them in over 15 years. Perhaps even people as terrible as them had changed a little after having a child. I laughed, really, it's too late now. Well then. With just that, I turned and started walking away. Kyle offered to carry my bags. Lily said, here, and draped a jacket over my shoulders. Even as children, they were considerate of my pregnancy. All right. How about we make dad's favorite hamburgers for dinner tonight? Kyle and Lily's favorite. Yay. Yay. Thank you. With a vow to protect the smiles of my beloved family, I was moving away from the pains of the past.